Hi, I'm Chen Mengyuan. I'm the co-founder of CFT, and I welcome you to the Upskilling series. We all see the world going digital, rapidly transforming our lives, our jobs, and the way we live all together. In fact, the pandemic has only been a catalyst to this transformation, and it's up to us to adapt to this technology-driven world. So how do you adapt to these changes? How do you find talent for roles that don't exist yet? Well, the Upskilling series aims to find its answers to all these questions by interviewing global experts, CEOs of fintech startup, and thought leaders to shed some lights on the jobs of tomorrow in financial services and fintech. Let's start with our next guest. I'm extremely pleased to have today Romain Bertomé, Senior Product Manager at Uber. Hi, Romain. How are you? Hi, Tram. Thanks a lot for uh, having me in this forum. I'm really pleased to talk with you. No, thanks a lot for joining us. Um, I'd love to start, you know, uh, with a question, which is, you know, could you share your own career path? And what's your role today, Romain? Um, you know, so if I, if I work a bit um, backwards, you know, like today, I'm senior product manager at Uber, as you mentioned. It has been like three years that I joined, you know, the uh, Uber money team um, in Amsterdam, where I basically, you know, have worked mainly on two initiatives, one being um, the way we pay, you know, earners globally. And the second one be how low do we um, unlock basically local payment methods um, for all Uber LOB to ensure that user can pay the way they want on our platform. Um, prior to join Uber, um, I actually spent three years of my time in Germany uh, working for Rocket Internet, um, working for one of their ventures called the Global Saving Group. Um, there I was basically, you know, um, product manager in charge of acquisition, conversion optimizations, and retention for basically 60 different websites um, that were couponing websites or saving websites, discount websites. Um, that were allowing, you know, e-commerce users to basically, you know, um, um, get discounts for the product that they buy online. Prior to that, um, I was, you know, in France right after, you know, wrapping my studies. Um, I was product manager at Johnson & Johnson, this big uh, American pharmaceutical company. Um, and I was basically, you know, working on what we call FMCG brands. So brands that, you know, Biafi, Nicoret, Neutrogena, um, and my role there was basically to build digital experience that would um, enhance um, the physical um, um, goods experience, basically. I work on smoking cessation program, for example, for the Nicorid brand. Um, and, you know, that's about it. That's, that's my, my journey. Um, yeah. It's very impressive and a huge, you know, uh, uh, career already, you know, shift from different industries, you know, from uh, Johnson & Johnson to uh, Uber uh, today. And how do you personally acquire new skills, upskill yourself? I think, you know, for me, there is, there is really two sides. There is one side that are, you know, really the skills that I acquired in, uh, in my work environment. And there is the other side, which is, the skills that I'm going to acquire, uh, you know, outside of my work environment. On the first one, I basically see three ways, you know, where I'm acquiring skills. The, the first one is, you know, um, and I think that's the main one and the most valuable uh, to me, it's the one-in-one -in -one coaching time that I get with my manager um, on a weekly basis. You know, um, when you start, it's probably uh, two hours per week and no, you know, it's a bit half an hour every week. That's really like, you know, really good quality times where you get feedback from your manager. And this person is the person that know you the most in the entire organization. Like she or he gets feedback, you know, from different peers that you are working um, uh, with. She gets feedback from your work. And basically this person is the most able to basically coach you and give you feedback on what you need to improve. Um, so that's, you know, the first one. The second one, you know, is um, um, I would say, Something we have at Uber that I like a lot is this um, peer sharing knowledge. So we have that forum of PMs in Amsterdam where basically every week, you know, we have the opportunity to share and learn from other PMs on a product launch, um, an experiment, user research that we have done. And this is basically, you know, a live sessions where we basically compare 
the process or the things that we're doing differently with others and basically can learn from others. The third one that is mainly, um, maybe, you know, the least interesting, but still extremely valuable is, um, you know, the e-learning platform that we have at Uber, um, I think extremely useful for learning new tools and how they work. Um, you know, a week ago, I, I remember completing a, a training on the new risk tool that we basically have. And that's basically, you know, ensure that you can operate autonomously and do your work autonomously, which is, which is great. Um, on the other side, and here that's, um, I would say, more a personal opinion is how, you know, outside of my work environment, I basically manage to get new skill. Um, the first one is, is basically books, you know, and, and it's pretty obvious. Um, for me, it's mainly listening to, to books rather than reading two books. I'm more, you know, an audiobook uh, uh, person. Um, and, and, you know, I think it's a great way to basically learn about what's going on on, on your industry. So for me, it's, you know, product management, um, staying up to date, you know, with other product management, you know, um, concepts that are being applied at other companies and so on. So this could be books or articles. And that's, I think, extremely useful and valuable. The second uh, thing there, um, which I like because I'm, I'm someone that is passionate about understanding how technology works, um, for me is, um, you know, e-learning platform online. Um, I'm specifically a big fan of Udacity. I have used other, you know, Udemy, Open Classroom and so on. I think, you know, those um, uh, e-learning platform online are especially great because from, from the beginning to the end, with you know concrete projects, they really um, step by step allow you to gain new skills, and then you can really translate those skills that you acquired kind of outside of work directly on some projects that you're having at work. So for me, that's a different way. That's basically I managed to upskill myself today. Super, no, excellent, and I'm 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 glad to know that you're a, a fond of e-learning. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you talk about books, so I I cannot ask you. Would you? you know, give us three books that you really recommend? I mean, your top, you know, favorite three books. I think, uh, you know, the top three reading that I would um, recommend, um, you know, the, the two recent one that I read, I would definitely recommend them. They are both books by Marty Kagan. Um, there is the Empowered one, which I think, you know, it's more for product organizations and how um, you want to structure your product organizations. Um, and there is another one which is inspired by Marty Kagan too, which is more about, you know, the product discovery um, and how, you know, um, you need to learn from your user in order to basically, you know, like build your product and all that kind of things. I think those two ones are extremely powerful. They are super complete. Um, there is a lot of insights as well from different companies, different product managers. So it's a good, really good aggregation. Um, and the other one, which is, you know, uh, probably... Um, uh, I would say lower level or, or, or more, you know, like entry level is probably, you know, the design sprints made by, you know, Google Venture. Um, this is, I think, a great book, you know, when you want to learn about user research, um, when you want to learn about quick prototyping techniques. Um, that's, I think, those three books, I would really recommend them to um, every level product manager, you know, if you are interested in product management, or even if you are senior product management, they are extremely interesting because there is a lot of insights and that would definitely save you a lot of time uh, in your current work. I guarantee that. <laughs> Thanks, Romain. My next question is uh, more towards team, uh, your team. How do you upskill your team? And uh, if you can perhaps, you know, share with us some successful initiative you've done uh, in, 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 your, in, your, in your company. Okay, that's, a, that's definitely a great question and a great challenge to solve. Um, <laughs> so, um, you know, the, the, the technique that basically I use, um, that's the same that I mentioned, you know, earlier. Like, I think the, the, the base for upscaling your team is this one-to-one, -one, you know, coaching session that you have. Um, that's basically the fundamental for providing efficient feedback, you know. Um, and for me, um, I have basically, you know, people that I'm managing directly where I'm going to have like weekly, you know, one-in-one uh, -in -one session. And I'm going to have people I'm interacting with like engineers, uh, you know, like data scientists, where I'm going to have probably a longer feedback loop because I'm not directly their manager. And for them, it's probably bi-weekly or monthly um, where we have, you know, those one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions where we can mutually give each other feedback and ensure that, you know, like we basically are able to improve. That's, you know, I would say the foundations. 
Hmm. Then um, there is different tools that we're using. Um, the other tools that we're using are, you know, basically um, um, pairing people. Um, this work extremely well, for example, on engineering, where um, basically when you have one engineer that's going to work on another code base, you want to pair them together so they can learn from each other and unblock themselves. But that's work as well, you know, well for product manager like myself. Um, Sometimes, you know, you're not going to be um, as knowledgeable on one of the area and you might want to be paired with another product manager to ensure that you can learn from here or from here in order to get those skills um, uh, yourself. Um, that's one. And the other one that I use recently is um, training recommendations, so e-learning platform recommendation. Um, and in this case, I'm especially using it where I see that someone uh, um, is struggling to, um, to get or assimilate a concept that I basically struggled myself as well before on. And I'm going to say, okay, that was kind of my recipe, um, you know, to, to, to manage that concept and master that concept. Um, and basically I'm going to recommend sometime, you know, the same training that I did. Uh, um, and because I know that somehow it might produce the same outcome. Um, so I would say that's the two main tools that today I'm using on my job in order to basically ensure that I can upskill and help people uh, that are working with me. Very good advice. And uh, if you can tell us, you know, from your, uh, you know, experience of working for other organization, large organization to, you know, a startup, uh, what are the challenges uh, that you see organization to upskill their employees? Mm -hmm. And and perhaps um, I'll say, you know, there's always, you know, this, um, this question about retention of talent. And what do you think? What would be your advice to fellow leaders, you know, on, on that? I think you know the 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 main challenge that I have seen um, you know um, across different working across different companies and different organization um, for upskilling people. I think the main challenge is people, um, and 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 what I mean here is I think not everyone is meant to be a manager and provide um, you know recurring coaching. I think it's something that um, you need to be to know how to do it. And you need to be willing to do it. And those are the two different stuff. And while I think you know companies have invested massively on e-learnings platform, providing learnings or access to conferences to their employees, um, I think we are still lacking in companies the recognition that not everyone needs to be a manager to succeed in their career. Um, and often you see in some companies that if you don't become a manager and stay an individual contributor, an IC, um, you can't basically grow further. And I'm personally a big believer of having two parallel track, you know, one for IC that want to become more and more seniors running bigger projects with higher complexity, um, you know, with higher dependency. And another track which allow, you know, an individual contributor to basically say, okay, no, I have learned enough in my area and I'm ready to basically take a next challenge by managing, you know, um, uh, people and basically um, make them becoming better. Um, and I think organizations need to basically evolve and provide that model. And then we would end up in a place where we have managers that their only focus would be training people and making people grow. And I think that's the, 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 the next and the biggest challenges for organizations in order to upskill their employees. That's very, very good. No, it's very, very true. And at Uber, tell me, Roma, who are the people you are hiring? And how would you describe your day-to-day -day job? So that's that's a good question. I'm going to split that into two. Uh, yes. I'm going to first. My address, first question uh, is that at Uber, who are the people you are yeah. hiring? <laughs> we we are we hiring. Um, I think you know, in general, we are hiring a lot of people uh, for different functions. And actually, at the moment, we are hiring a lot. So uh, if anyone listening to that video um, uh, want to see the available opportunities, definitely recommend you to check um, Uber.com/careers. Um, but in general, I'm going to talk a bit more about the, the, the product manager positions, which I, I, I know best. You know, um, I think the people we are um, hiring, the things we are looking at, um, obviously, you know, we are looking people from different horizon. Um, I think, you know, if you look at the PM team in Amsterdam, we all have different backgrounds. Um, if I think about my previous manager, um, she was coming from um, operation. 
um, and then moved to product management. Another of our colleagues did the same. Um, there, are, there are other people that move, you know, from engineering more backgrounds to, you know, product manager. And there is people like myself that have been product manager their entire career. Um, so I think the background, um, you know, can be really different for product manager. I think what matter is the three things that we are looking at when we hire a product manager. And those three things are really, you know, one, being customer obsessed. Um, that's, you know, really the stuff that is driving us. We want to ensure that we solve problem for our customer. And we are looking for people that, you know, are obsessed by solving customer problem. That's the first one. The second one, um, and it's being data driven. Um, an important job of, you know, being a product manager is to be able to prioritize and take decisions. And those decisions, we make them on data. Um, so you need to be comfortable, you know, playing with data and making decisions based on data. And the third one is we often solve, you know, customer problems with uh, technology. So basically, you need to have a good engineering comprehension. So that's really, you know, the three things that we are looking at when we're hiring someone. Um, a pro tip that I can give to someone, this is something like, this is an article we shared between the PM group um, in Amsterdam is, we say that great product manager or these articles say that great product manager are 10, 30, 50, which mean that a great product manager is in the 10% more skill in one of the domain, let's say customer obsession, 30% more skill in, um, you know, in, 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 in data and the 50, in the 50% of product manager that are the more skill in engineering comprehension. So um, you can't master all the domains because those are really var last and, 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 and uh, large domain, you know. Um, so, so you need to be focusing on some and basically you need to be exceptionally good on one. You need to be good on another one and you need to be on the top 50% on the third one. Um, that would be really, you know, my tips for anyone looking to, 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 to become a great product manager. We'll remember, we'll remember 10, 30, 50, we'll remember. <laughs> so where do you find these people? Again, I think, you know, like, as, as, I, as I told you, you know, like, we are really hiring people from a different background. And we really, you know, at Uber embrace diversity, you know, like, we believe that this is uh, something that helps us get, you know, different inputs and uh, build better products, basically. Um, so if I look, you know, at, at you know, the, 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 the people we have hired in the past, um, you know, as I mentioned, some of them, you know, were actually designers and switched to be product manager. They basically, you know, were super strong on the customer obsession, were good on the data side, and where every time, you know, whenever they were designing something, were interested about the technical challenges, you know. Um, there are people that were actually engineers and, you know, but whenever they were building their technical solution, they were every time thinking, okay, is this solution going to be good for the user? What does it's going to bring them in which journey this user is? So those people are actually, you know, um, uh, transforming and, and basically changing to, 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 to a different role. Um, and obviously, you know, we are hiring as well previous product manager, um, you know, that have experience in previous company. And again, what we are really looking at for each of those person is ability to put themselves in the shoes of the customer. That's really, you know, um, one of the key things we're um, uh, uh, looking at. Um, and obviously, on top of the three things that I mentioned, the customer obsession, the data-driven mind, and, you know, the engineering comprehension, what we add to this is, you know, the communication skills, the, tra the strategic skills, which is the ability, you know, to define a strategy and a vision for your team, you know, a year, three years down the line. And that's more what we're looking for, for, you know, senior position. Mm -hmm. On the communication side, what we're looking at is, you know, good, good ability to communicate because one of the key things for a product manager is to be able to communicate with different stakeholders. And this is quite a central, you know, position. You interact with operation, te operation team, marketing teams, support teams, other engineering and product teams, and leadership teams. So that's really, you know, you need to have this ability as well to master communication. Super. No, thanks a lot, uh, uh, Romain. You know, at CFT, we have a large community of uh, professionals. Uh, some of them, a large majority of them, are finance professionals. Mm -hmm. And today, you know, some of them are coming to us and they are looking uh, to get into tech companies like Uber. And so my question to you would be, what would be the best piece of advice 
that you would give to a finance professional who is looking perhaps to get into Uber? Really, really interesting question. I think, you know, um, again, I'm going to speak mainly from, you know, the product manager um, uh, uh, side, and that might not apply to uh, all the positions that we have available. But I think, you know, from a, from a product management perspective, I think at Uber, um, we have a really specific way to solve problems that you can find in, you know, some startups or some, you know, um, um, big, you know, tech companies like Uber. Um, we often, you know, don't rely on big market studies or big trends, but we much more, you know, prefer to ground our insights into customer insights where we go, you know, talk to our customers directly in order to know what are their pain points, what are their current experience, in which context they are using our products and as well on the data that we collect directly from our products. So I think my piece of advice, you know, to um, um, the, the, the people working in finance and looking, you know, to do a switch would be try to um, basically, you know, learn more about like the, 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 the way um, companies like Uber approach, you know, problem solving, um, you know, and I recommend a couple of the books, you know, that explain that, you know, um, uh, uh, in a great way and try to apply that, you know, um, in your job, you know, on a daily or on a weekly basis and strike, you know, to master that kind of way of solving problems. And, you know, once you have done that and when you feel comfortable, um, I think another tip that I could give is there is a fantastic YouTube channel for product school, um, which do a lot of um, mock-up interview uh, for product manager. Um, I would definitely encourage, you know, like looking um, at, at some of those videos in order to see like, what is a typical product manager interview? Because to be honest, that's quite, you know, quite specific and that's quite a drill, you know, like questions are flying and so on. So um, basically getting used to it uh, um, is definitely like something that you want to, uh, uh, to have practice uh, before joining a, an interview in real case. Sure. And would you mind sharing with us the, the website? I can definitely share with you the, 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 the URL of the YouTube channel for sure. Excellent. Uh, and now, you know, we, we have, you know, finance professionals, we have professionals coming to us, but we have also, uh, you know, students freshly graduated coming out of universities and looking, you know, to get into uh, this new world. The, 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 the reality is that with, you know, today with this fastest, you know, change that is happening, uh, uh, in acceleration of digitalization, uh, jobs are changing. Jobs are changing, jobs are transforming. You have those who are being created. And so what are the top jobs you are seeing being created today and perhaps most in demand compared to five years ago? Really interesting question. Uh, it's, it's, you know, really hard to say, like, you know, how tendencies are going to evolve. But um, if we speak about today, I think, first of all, like, the, the job market is probably extremely fragmented and different um, across different markets. I think, you know, US is probably a different market. And, but if I focus myself, you know, in Europe, in non, um, I would say American companies, um, I would say that um, I, I see that there is more, you know, product manager position opening, more data scientist or product analyst position open and more uh, user researcher um, position open. Um, you know, I think we we move um, in Europe from that world where, um, you know, the, 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 the product management function we're seen as, okay, there is someone in our company, you know, that basically um, um, understand well the business, um, understand a bit the technology, um, and there is an open position. Okay, we're going to let him think about what we need to do for the user to, um, you know, this mindset where... Um, we see the value in product management. We see that we need to plan ahead. We need to basically learn deeper about our customer. We need to follow certain methodology to ensure that we learn the right way from our customer. And, you know, bit by bit, I see that, you know, product manager positions have gained traction. And with that as well, the key function that are needed in the product team are as well gaining traction. And I'm talking here about data scientists, product analysts, and, you know, um, uh, user researcher. So I think I see like all those functions, at least in Europe, getting more traction. And I think that's definitely needed if you need to build and if you want to build, um, you know, top product experience. 
So I have a, a bonus question. Uh, and uh, we've been, you know, you, you give advice, you know, to a finance professional who is looking to get into uh, Uber. You give advice, uh, very valuable advice for those who are considering jobs that are newly created. And uh, my question now, it's a bonus question. What tips would you give to someone aiming for a C-level position in a startup? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. Thanks a lot. I think, you know, um, for me, when, when obviously there is different uh, startup stages and, you know, if I um, talk about, you know, an early stage startup, I think my, probably my advice is that when you are in an early stage startup, you have that unique opportunity to basically be close to the customer and know their problem. Um, so really my piece of advice would be um, you know, roll up your sleeve and spend as much time, you know, with the customer, trying to learn the problem, trying, you know, to see how they use the products and what you need to basically like build for them in order to, you know, solve their problem. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's really, you know, that unique moments where you can, you know, really be in touch with the customer and all those insights are going to be extremely valuable in the long term when you build the strategy, when you build your vision, and they're going to be able to inform that. As the company is growing as a C-level position, you're going to lose that momentum and you're going to lose that opportunity, you know, to basically be able to be in touch with the customer. And even if your company and your org is growing, I, I definitely recommend, you know, to anyone in C-level positions or anyone that is not in touch directly with the customer to still spend, you know, maybe two hours every two weeks or on a monthly basis to talk to the customers because this is extremely useful. As a C-level, you are making big decisions that influence the entire org and you want to ensure that your reality as a c-level is the same as you know the reality of the customer um, that's going to allow you you know when you are in these roadmap review meetings to understand why you know your product guys have basically um, uh, prioritized those problem this way and not another way so getting that context extremely um, easy to get when it's an early stage startup and i think this moment is really key to learn from the, from the users I totally agree with you. It's uh, totally in line with uh, what we think as well at CFT. I think you answered a lot of questions most people have in mind. So thanks a lot, Roma. Uh, thanks a lot for your time. Uh, and how can people connect with you? Um, yeah, first of all, thanks a lot. You know, thanks a lot to, to, to you, Tram, and to the CFT. Uh, people can definitely, you know, reach out to me on LinkedIn, um, my, my profile, Roma Bertome. Uh, you can easily find me and, you know, I'm doing my best to answer the questions I get, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, thank you for being with us today. And uh, I, I see you all uh, for the next interview. Thanks, Romain. And Thanks see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. I hope you've learned a lot. I'm already looking forward to the next interview. In the meantime, if you wish to learn more about the new world of finance, I invite you to check our previous videos where we welcome many guest experts to share their views. You can check out CFT's blog and articles to learn more and start your fintech journey. If you'd like to go further, you can acquire the basics in fintech, AI or open banking under 40 minutes with our free masterclasses from our experts. You can find all this information in the description below. Again, thank you for being with us today and see you for the next interview.